My name's uh, David Brown. I run a contract uh, pasture and crop agronomy service and today we're talking about renovating pastures in the southeast and here we are in a paddock uh, that really needs some work. You can see the weeds, uh, bracken, silver grass, Guildford grass and there'll be some soil in here too that we would really like to, to get rid of before we start going and spending a lot of money on expensive pastures that are really rewarding uh, like Lucen, Flaris, Coxfoot uh, based pastures. So you just don't do that in, a, in a, uh, a minute or a season. It takes time. Guildford grass is particularly hard, or onion grass, or, or nut, nut grass uh, is uh, particularly difficult to get rid of uh, quickly. It's a two year campaign, but we can do it. And also bracken. And uh, by taking time over it and planting a, a, a crop in the meantime that we can control these weeds in is the way to go. So here we are in a, in a, a bit of a mess here, and, uh, but in three years time we'll have this paddock sown to Phalaris and Lucen and looking really good. So what do we do in the meantime? Okay, we have a look at, uh, we have a look at the nutrition of the paddock, uh, we have a look at what we can put in here that will allow us to control the weeds that are here over perhaps a two year campaign, and we look at the nutrition, so we'd probably do a soil test here, have a look at that, and then uh, make plans as to how we go about it. But probably you'll find that the uh, that's a highly acidic soil probably needs some lime. And uh, next year we'd think about sowing some barley or some uh, rye corn or some uh, rye grass. And then we'd think about uh, 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 some herbicides to take out the, uh, the weeds that we identified there before. So here we have a, a very good example of Guilford grass that for this year has probably gone nearly too far. You can see the tips are starting to, to burn off and that's getting to the last stages of, of uh, ideal spraying time. And, uh, and so from now on probably wouldn't touch this, we'd put this across to, to next year. Uh, obviously silver grass is, our, is one of our other problems. There's quite a dense mat of it here and here and it's a useless grass. Uh, contaminates wool uh, and, the, uh, and the meat of sheep and uh, as a, a dubious value for cattle and of course the hardy bracken plant that we have here that's uh, very easy to get rid of but just another job. In this instance they're the three major weeds that we'll be attacking uh, to get back to our uh, renovated situation. So he here we are on the roadside looking at what we really should have in the paddock and this is a medic uh, which is highly desirable legume, legume pasture which uh, grows pretty much uh, everywhere uh, again not hard to establish but doesn't like weeds. Uh, having seen the, uh, the, the, the paddock that needed renovation here it is in the, the second year where, where we've addressed the problem of uh, uh, unevenness we've leveled the paddock out by cultivation and then to handle the weeds that we were talking about, we are sowing a forage crop because every year every paddock's got to pay its own way and in order to do that while we're controlling the weeds prior to us going into a Lucen, Phalaris or other improved pasture stand, we need to be able to control the weeds and um, make a dollar return. So here we are here with a paddock of barley that's already been grazed twice. It's had a urea uh, application as well. But more importantly, we've, we've put herbicide on, which has allowed us to control the weeds. The weeds being sorrel and particularly Guilford grass, and among others like capeweed and the, and the hardy annuals, uh, geranium and so on. So here we are, we've got a, uh, now a reasonably tidy paddock. Probably next year we would go in and do the same thing again, just to make sure. However, having seen what happens in the summer from now, gives us a pretty good idea of how good a job we've done for this year. So then that leads into what we do after this and the idea is to renovate the pasture so uh, into a perennial situation where we're not having to annually sow uh, barley or uh, ryegrass or whatever it might be. So the important thing to observe here now after the second uh, grazing of this uh, uh, forage barley is to uh, notice the regrowth that's taking place. The plant, the, the plant has finished tillering, so the regrowth on the third occasion will be nothing like we had uh, earlier on, and so after the next grazing, this, this pasture will be effectively uh, uh, finished for the year. 
and then we'll get prepared for the next year. So the weed I'm referring to in particular, uh, one of the two is sole, and you'll see by way of identification, the leaf on a sole plant is quite unique. It has two little hooks on the base of the leaflet, and uh, that's a very good way of identifying it if you haven't uh, come across it before. The other weed in question is Guilford grass, or onion grass, or nut grass, which has a bulb on the bottom of the, uh, which I've pulled off, but uh, has a, a bulb there that splits at this time of the year in preparation for regrowth next year. And this is the other weed that is particularly difficult to get control of, and we need to do that before we go back into pasture. Very easy to get hold of, but it's, uh, it's a tough weed to, uh, to deal with in, in pasture itself. Right, so here we are now in the paddock that's been improved. This is the third, third year attempt and we've now got it into, uh, into Lucerne. And this has now been in, this is into its second season. And you'll see the lush uh, phalaris and uh, Lucerne plants that have been grazed currently by cattle, as you can hear. And the Lucerne plant down here, just for methods of identification, are like that and the phalaris is like this and the combination of the two make an excellent pasture and that's the aim of the exercise but until we get the weeds cleaned up prior to this we cannot hope to achieve this quality of pasture so when we're talking about a good establishment we look for the rows in the paddock and you can see the rows here traveling up here where the grass and loosen are, are rich another one here and that's what we're aiming at with the clover in the middle which comes in later on, but uh, that's a good pasture. It's been now grazed with a heap of cattle over the last week or two, but uh, that's what we're after. We want density in our pasture, uh, and if we don't have that, then we're not achieving what we want. And of course that goes with nutrition and, and uh, controlling pests and all that sort of uh, uh, stuff, which we can perhaps talk about at a later time. So that, that uh, ends our little session for this uh, occasion, and I hope that gives you some insight into what's involved in growing pastures. It's not just a simple uh, 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 spur of the moment decision to say, right, I'm gonna improve my paddock next year. It needs to be some thought, some control of, of pests, diseases, and weeds, and, and that takes a bit of time, maybe a two or three year program. So on that, um, if you need to follow that up with and seeking any more information, come and see the boys at Caztec, and we thank Ray White Keatley for this edition.